Did you just have lumbar fusion post surgery and you need to start strengthening your core muscles and lumbar spine safely and effectively? Hi, my name is Annie and welcome to my channel Annie Pilates Physical Therapist. In this video, I'll be discussing about lumbar fusion, the timeline, when to start the exercises and the best way to slowly engage your core and lumbar muscles safely and effectively utilizing an elastic band and a ball with a different timeline depending on what kind of lumbar fusion. So I'll be discussing different types of lumbar fusion and how to keep it together safely and effectively with the help of your surgeon and your local physical therapist. This is just an adjunct to your current physical therapy program and to learn more about lumbar fusion so you know what to do so that you prevent re-injuring your spine. So get your mat ready, a fusible ball and elastic band to join me today. Okay, my friends, let's discuss about lumbar fusion. So it's usually from lumbar one, two, three, four, five, depending on the level where you have the fusion. And this is safe for whatever level you have that fuses the area to give space on the neur neural foramina or to give it stability. So meeting with the physical therapist, and your doctor is so important before and after surgery to give a specific direction that can be given to you when to begin various types of exercise. You want to make sure you'll be guided first. See your local doctor and physical therapist first. As I said earlier, this is just an adjunct to your current program. So there's so many surgical techniques and approaches for fusion. For example, the access to the spine can be achieved through incisions in the front, from your abdomen or at the back and the sides. And some are combinations of approaches depending on what type of surgery as well as how to lift and give stability on your lumbar spine. Usually it's minimally invasive techniques now or sometimes it's traditional open surgical techniques depending on the doctor who has the studies who progress on more efficient, less aggressive fusions. Because of this variation, some exercises may not be appropriate for all patients. So making sure you ask your doctor first when you can start and I'll be discussing usually the average timeline. The surgeon's technique and the patient's individual diagnosis will influence what rehabilitation should be done. So to see the spinal fusion surgery recovery, there's a one to one to two, four weeks after. These are the crucial part when you need to rest and let it heal. Try to, and usually doctors will give you a back brace to hold that area to make sure you don't do any bending, twisting, and lifting activities. While the program will be different for each patient, here is a general guideline that I'll be discussing for general operative spine fusion rehabilitation that should be customized for each patient. As I said, each is unique, no one's the same, each one has a different protocol, and I'm just giving you a guideline that you can start. We want to make sure you know what's the limit, what's safe for you, and follow the week, every week progression. And want to make sure that you are not hurting your spine by doing these gentle techniques. So the surgical team will typically advise the patient to take short walks first and do gentle stretching during the first week after surgery. So we want to make sure you get out of the bed, but utilizing the back brace, sometimes doctors will recommend that. And as I said, limit any bending, twisting, or lifting activities. Try not to do those and follow the surgical team's recommendations. So for day one, limit exercise. That's the first thing. To just short walks. Usually inside your home, you can just get up from your bed, back to the kitchen, and back to your bed. Don't go outside yet and then slowly progress. The patient must move frequently beginning the first day after surgery so you don't have deconditioning and you should be walking slow and steady to the point of minor aching. So minor aching is sometimes the pain is not up to five or 10, it's just one to three, but stop if there's any sharp pain. So you wanna make sure you're also taking your medication so that you can slowly move and not in bed. So most surgeons will encourage patients to get out of bed and walk the first day after surgery and recommend walking frequently throughout the initial recovery period, increasing the amount and length of the walks as tolerated, which means you can start five minutes and then 10 and then wait for a few more days before you add more. And then you can 
spread it out throughout the day one in the morning lunch and then evening so there's effective exercise walking you can do you want to make sure you're in a good posture not leaning forward and if you need to use a walker and a cane in the beginning that's fine as well days one to seven then you can slowly start stretching you want to make sure you're not the stretching of your back you're just stretching your legs patients should feel the stretch mostly on your hamstrings and quadriceps so these legs get tight to the point that the stretch feels good and if there's pain you should stop so stretching the hamstrings best when you lie down on your back particularly you utilize an elastic band or a strap so you can join me now while lying on your back you can place the strap around the arch of your foot and you can start with your leg straight with the opposite knee bent for support and gently lift and hold that you can start with five seconds hold to progress to 10 seconds hold you want to make sure the middle of the back where the nerve root is located prevent any scarring and adhesions so stretching of muscle should be done slowly with 30 seconds hold up to three repetitions only two sets per day so these are you can do it in lying down it's the best because your spine is in stable position and then slowly lift and hold that for 30 seconds and then slowly go all the way down straight and do that three reps on one leg and three repetitions as well on the other leg and then you can also do this in seated position so sitting at the edge of your chair if you're in the chair don't go on the floor on the mat you want to make sure you're in the chair straight on one leg in front with toes pointed up and your knees straight in front of you so push your belly forward a little bit to move the stretch while keeping your chest high try your best not to bend forward from your back but mostly on your hip just to stretch your hamstrings so try again to the other side the next one is to stretch your quadriceps as I said you can do this in standing with your knee bent behind you if you can reach it keeping your back straight but usually you need to support like holding on to something for balance or you can do it in side lying position lying on your side bend your knee and reach it if you can't reach it you can use a strap place it at the arch of your foot at the back of your foot at the top of your foot and then slowly pull back until you can feel a stretch in front of your thigh the next way is to do some gentle nerve stretches so this is after maybe two weeks after surgery so lying on your back sciatic nerve glide is the best way to stretch the nerve and to floss because the sciatic nerve is the largest largest nerve of our body and you just slowly hug place your interlock fingers behind your thigh and then pull your knee to your chest and gently lift extend as much as you can don't hyperextend your knee you don't need to lock it and gently dorsiflex your ankle and then bend your knee tippy toes position first extend dorsiflex and down slow and steady do that 10 repetitions each leg until you feel the stretch at the back of the thigh through the hip while supporting the raised legs with your hands behind the knee pump the ankle while holding that knee still that's the gentle progression so i do a gentle nerve glide as you feel that beautiful stretch after 10 reps now you can do the ankle pumps you don't have to fully lock for absolute beginner and there's variation you can do you can do an active hamstring stretch it can be done from the same position while lying on your back bend both knees slowly straighten one leg and pushing the heel towards the ceiling until you feel the stretch so with my hand i'm pressing down first dorsiflex and push pull 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 i'm pulling it and when i'm pushing my thigh down and hold that isometric resistance and then let go of that resistance and then gentle stretch so you're doing a contract relax to relieve pressure so as you contract and then relax and do that up to 10 seconds hold 10 repetitions on each thigh as well so those are the three exercises you can start nerve flossing hamstring stretch quadriceps stretch active contract relax that you can start in the first seven weeks and then there's a next timeline window from week six to week nine this is when you're already having the fusion 
better and holding well. You might have a follow-up with your doctor and have an x-ray on your spine. You wanna make sure it's holding well and there's a bone growth around the fusion and see the doctor first if it's okay to progress. So in these variations, we're gonna do more static exercises because they are done without moving the trunk. As I said, there's still no bending forward yet. You're still not allowed to do any twisting or lifting activities. You wanna prevent any movements on your spine. They should be completed only by moving your arms and your legs while avoiding any rocking and arching of the lower trunk. You don't want any hyperextension or flexion. No movements yet. So the initial six weeks, as I said earlier, recuperation period after our final fusions focuses on getting back to feeling good. After this initial period, more advanced exercises should be added to strengthen the back. And I said earlier, the structures, the ligaments and tendons surrounding the area needs to fully heal and there could be some scar formation, but you don't want to have that scar to override the area. So we're gonna slowly improve those small muscles surrounding the lumbar spine to be activated. This is also crucial, utilizing an elastic band to slowly strengthen your core and abdominal exercises. Patients can add more rigor and variety to their routines utilizing an exercise ball and resistance band. So we might sit down on the ball because when you sit down on the ball with a supervised family member or friends to make sure you're not going to fall or your physical therapist. So exact timing of when a surgeon will recommend adding dynamic exercises is dependent on how you heal that lumbar fusion because there are some patients even though week 12 they're still not fully fused then it's best to continue the gentle exercises everyone is different on their healing as i said see the doctor first from clearance to continue with this variety of dynamic exercises to improve the stability and achieve the surgeon's goals for your own for your own personal preferences. So these are one of the best. So you sit down on a ball and you wanna make sure you engage your core. And if you feel like this is too difficult, you can utilize just the chair to start. So with the ball, you're already activating your core muscles. And with this, you wanna challenge by lifting your toes up, keeping your core engaged and down. So even just lifting your toes up is already a nice challenge for your core. And after 10 times lifting your toes up, then you can do the heels as we slowly progress. And after these lovely 10 repetitions, this is when you slowly progress with a gentle march. Lifting your knee a little bit higher above your hip and you can feel it in your hip flexors. And then at the same time, you're engaging your core muscles to strengthen those abdominal muscles without twisting your spine. And now with the elastic band, you can place this around your thighs as after two weeks of doing those gentle ball exercises, now you can do a gentle marches. And now you can do a gentle challenge with your arm when you lift your arm up, you're really targeting your core more, just a few inches. You can do alternating. So when you lift your left knee up, then you lower your right elbow down, left and right. And when you do that, you're targeting your obliques as well without any twisting and bending forward. So just left and right. Beautiful work. After 10 reps of doing that, you can use the ball on your hands and knees position for support and you can do bird dog. So bird dog is when you extend one leg and then lift the opposite hand. The ball will help engage your core. Try not to hyperextend, keeping your core engaged and then switch to the other side. After 10 times, then you can slowly progress with elastic band around your thighs again as a gentle progression after maybe one week of just doing bird dog without any resistance. So with the ball as a gentle support, bird dog. And once you find the bird dog getting easier, then you can do the fire hydrant that helps strengthen your glutes muscles that will support your lumbar spine. When you do fire hydrant, 
try your best not to use your back muscles. You use your hip, try not to twist your spine, keeping your spine straight. After doing that 10 times, then you can slowly progress to three sets of 10. Once it gets so much easier, and then after two months of utilizing the ball, then you can let go of the ball, and now you can do bird dog without it. Now it's all your core and back muscles. 10 repetitions, and then 10 repetitions on your side for five hydrant. So those are my five exercises that you can do from week one to week 12 of exercises from week one to week nine then up to 12 if you feel like you still need an extra month of recovery to strengthen your core and back muscles so those are let's re recap first just walking the first two weeks and then gentle stretches so getting out of bed is the first thing you have to remember then gentle stretches that you can do, the hamstrings and quadriceps, and some nerve flossing. Fourth is the sitting on the ball exercises with variety using your ankles and a little bit marches to activate and the obliques. And the fifth one is utilizing a ball in your hands and knees position, performing the bird dog as well as the fire hydrant. And if you love this video and you want me to do a follow along, Leave a comment down below and I'll try my best to make a video just for you. I'll be relaunching my back master class for those who need an extra help and guidance from me, especially for those with lumbar fusion, neck, back, pain, scoliosis, costochondritis, or even umbilical hernia who needs an extra support and guidance from me. I'll be relaunching soon. Click the link below. Be part of my early bird waitlist for first come, first serve basis. If you want to learn more about Pilates, yoga, physical therapy, health and wellness, please subscribe to my channel. Ring the bell so you won't miss anything. Like and share this video. Every like you give to my channel, you are supporting me. All of these exercises I discussed today, you can start up to three sets of 10 as you progress, and then up to five sets once you get stronger, and a set that lasts 30 to 60 seconds, so about the length of a commercial break during a television show, you can do this once a day. It's usually recommended and slowly progress up to twice a day. Until my next video, always remember, be safe, be well, and healthy you. Bye!